What's up guys, this is Alvi T from Combat Culture and do you feel like you are somebody that is hands heavy? You want to feel the crack in each punch? If that's the case, the Mexican style gloves are just for you. So a couple of things I want to share about Mexican style gloves before I get into the glove reviews today is that they're typically more snug and compact compared to some of the other gloves available. The dense padding in the gloves offer more protection, but at the same time, not compromising the size of the glove. This means that the gloves are typically more responsive, and it's also why you get that pop whenever you throw a punch with Mexican style gloves. The Mexican style gloves are typically made from small mom and pop shops, and that's why they're able to use higher grade materials, especially when compared to the mass produced gloves that are usually made out of Pakistan, and even the ones made out of Thailand too. And there's also a lot of pride that goes into the glove making process in Mexico and the end product. And a lot of that is due to Mexico's rich heritage with boxing. So there's definitely drawbacks too that come with Mexican style gloves. One is because of the build of the gloves and the denser padding, it's usually not the best gloves to spar with. Uh, more so for your partners, um, just because, you know, part of feeling that pop on the glove is because of the denser padding, how everything's really compact, but also one of the byproducts of that is that your partners will feel a lot, a lot of the punches more than they would with some of the other brands available. And another drawback is because of the scale of a lot of these mom and pop shops, several of them haven't set up digital storefronts. So, you know, they don't have websites. Um, they're a little harder to find on, you know, some of the retailers available. Um, and that's because, you know, back in the day, a lot of these brands, they would uh, really just sell the products based off word of mouth, right? Like they would bring the products to a local gym, have some of the folks try it out and then really just, you know, kind of spread the business that way. Now, obviously the landscape has changed and a lot of these brands are catching up, you know, um, even if they haven't made a website, a lot of them have started selling their products on, you know, like eBay, some on Etsy, but primarily the biggest platforms right now for a lot of these brands is gonna be Facebook and Instagram. Um, there are still some brands that haven't quite transitioned over yet, which we'll cover later, but that's also something to consider that, you know, if you are interested in some of these brands, some of them might be harder to get compared to a lot of the other brands that we've covered in the past. And another thing to note is that when it comes to quality control, oftentimes Mexican style gloves are pretty inconsistent. I think they are notorious for having gloves that are either over or underweight um, as intended so you may end up buying you know some 14 ounce gloves that weigh you know 13 and some change right or they might weigh 15 ounces and some change so that's also something to keep in mind as well so when we're talking about mexican style brands uh, i'm pretty sure you've heard of cleto reyes it's probably the biggest brand right now um, in mexico specifically with mexican style gloves so we're really going to pivot over and talk more about the smaller mom and pop shops that you may not have heard of but you should definitely have on your radar and before we begin one small note i want to bring up which i'm going to bring up throughout this video is that a lot of these brands Brands we're gonna cover do come from a common lineage and that is the Zapol brand. So basically the Zapol brand was founded by Ariellano Lopez which is Zapol spelled backwards. After he passed away several of his relatives would go on to create brands of their own a lot of which we're gonna cover today. I don't think Zapol the brand itself is still around anymore but from what I've been told the closest glove that is like the Zapol glove from back in the day is going to be the Gill glove that we did cover before in the past. So with that said let's go ahead and jump into our Mexican style branded gloves. So the first gloves we're going to cover are the Boxio Torres Medinas. Uh, they're an independent brand that is based out of Mexico. So these definitely are premium gloves that's crafted with really high grade materials. These specific gloves do have very soft lining inside. I felt as if the interior was pretty roomy. Definitely malleable as well, so it's nice and soft. Um, I thought the design was simple but effective, you know, pretty clean. You can get these on the website. Uh, the prices are in peso, so keep that in mind. Got these gloves for about 180 $82. I think for what you get, these are very well priced. Definitely one of my favorite gloves, not just Mexican style gloves, but gloves in general. So moving on, we're going to cover the Campeones. I believe they're related to the Zapol family, although I can't confirm. These gloves do have a very small form factor, as you'll see compared to a lot of the other gloves that I have. So if you do have smaller hands, these may be some good ones to look into. Even though they are smaller, I mean, they're snug, but they're not too tight, which I did appreciate. The lining inside was very soft as well. Definitely not stiff, pretty soft and malleable. One interesting was that it did have a detached thumb. I don't have too many gloves that have a detached thumb, so that was kind of interesting. 
I would be careful if you're gonna spar or clinch with these just because of the plastic on the wrist. So just be mindful of that. I did order these gloves through IG. The owner doesn't always respond right away. And I think he uses a translator. So if you're able to speak Spanish, it might be to your benefit to communicate via Spanish. If not, you can always use Google Translate. For reference, I paid about 1700 pesos, which I think comes out to about $100. That's with shipping. So these are extremely well priced for what you get. I would definitely recommend these if you're looking to get some Mexican style gloves. So moving on, we're going to be covering the classics. I believe they are related to the Zapol family. The shape of the glove does remind me of my gills or Nakali's. And what I mean by that is that it's got a very, very flat profile. It's also flat on the end too. So, you know, you got to keep that in mind, depending on what kind of puncher you are. These aren't round like a lot of other gloves. These are definitely very flat. So lining inside is also very rough, similar to the Nakali's I have. So again, that's something you want to keep in mind if you don't always train with hand wrap because you can potentially get blisters over time. Again, these gloves have a detached thumb too, just like the Campeones. In terms of design, I really like three-tone design. I like color combination that they chose. Kind of reminds me of old school Wolverine. Just like the Campeones though, I would be careful if you're going to spar or clinch with these. Again, because of the plastic, it could potentially rub and scratch up your partner. I got these through IG. The one drawback is that these are a little bit more expensive. I paid about 2,400 pesos, which is $200. That's with shipping included. And that's about double the price of the Campeones. So if I had to choose between the two, too, even though I have to wait longer, I'd probably go with the Campeones. So moving on, we're going to be covering the Angeles gloves. I read somewhere that, you know, they had manufactured the No Boxing, No Life and also the Bayonetta gloves, although I can't confirm. The glove in itself, again, really well made, just like a lot of the other gloves we've covered today. Um, this one was a longer glove. The cuff goes pretty far up my forearm, uh, much like the Classics and Campeones. These have a relatively flatter profile. Um, there is a lot of padding, though, so the padding distribution is pretty good on these. Um, these are softer, too compared to some of the other gloves we covered today. The foam is pretty stiff, but you know, overall it was a softer glove. Also, it's a pretty roomy glove too. So I imagine these are going to be good for folks with bigger hands. I like the design. It's pretty simple. You know, I like the color choice. Um, I personally got these used online for about $115. I couldn't really find any websites that were selling these online. I think the boxing collector sold these some time ago, but I don't think they're available anymore. So, you know, that's one thing about these is that's a little hard to get a hold of. So the next ones we're going to cover are the Lopez gloves and I believe the owner is one of Zapol's uh, son-in-laws so you know they're very similar to a lot of the old school Mexican gloves so you know with that said it's got a flat profile uh, really flat on the end pretty rough liner inside just you know like the classics and also the Gil and the Collies the gloves are pretty tight so I'm not sure if they're gonna be really good for folks with bigger hands and also because of the dense foam you know these make for really good puncher's gloves especially if you're looking to do some bag work or pad training I personally wouldn't spar with these because of that um, and if you were to spar I'd definitely be careful because of the plastic on there so be mindful when it comes to clinching I don't really see an online presence for this company so they're kind of hard to come by but I'm pretty sure if you looked around some of the community forums or reddit for example there's got to be somebody that's connected with you know some of the folks from Lopez so depending on how much you like the brand or how interested you are in looking into the brand, I'm pretty sure there's a way. So the next brand we're gonna cover is the Maestro brand and they're unique because they're actually based in El Salvador. So it's a relatively newer brand. Um, the glove itself, the one I have is super soft, uh, very malleable, very, very soft liner inside. It was snug, but not too tight, but interesting enough that there was a lot of room in the thumb and finger box. So, you know, again, I think folks with, you know, bigger hands, these gloves are probably a good fit for it does have a longer profile so you know it goes up my forearm a little bit more than some of the other gloves i'm personally not too crazy about the logo that they use right now i you know think it would be nice if they were to redesign the logo a little bit just to help it pop and stand out a little bit more again i think these are really quality gloves and it could probably do them a lot of good if they were just to you know touch up their logo a little bit pricing wise these seem to be around the 150 to 180 dollar range i think under 200 dollars before shipping at least I got these used online so for the price I think they're pretty good but the problem is that they are pretty hard to find so moving on, the next ones we're going to cover are going to be the Everlast MX Hook and Loop. So, you know, these are actually part of the premium line, the MX line 
for Everlast and these are made in Mexico so these are really nice high quality gloves now the ones that I have are relatively long the cuff goes you know pretty far up my forearm I think these are amongst the longest gloves that I have I felt as if it has pretty good wrist support good protection overall it does have a relatively rough liner inside compared to some of the other gloves I've tried out maybe a bit snug you know for folks with bigger hands because of the longer cuff it is a bit cumbersome I got these for about $180 directly from their website you know if you're looking for a big reputable brand and you're not ready to take a leap into some of the smaller boutique brands but you want to try out the Mexican style gloves these may be worth a look the next brand we're going to cover is a new sporting brand uh, this brand is actually one of the more popular brands amongst the online community um, the gloves in itself very very soft although it does have some pretty dense padding um, I think they're good for larger hands you know so if you're somebody you know looking for a pair of gloves you know for a bigger set of hands these might be worth looking into these are definitely premium gloves you know crafted from very high grade materials I think there's really good foam distribution absolutely a boxer's glove you really feel the pop with each punch now I have read online that new sporting the company does manufacture several branded gloves I think Grant is one of them um, just based on the similarities between the two gloves it's definitely one of the top Mexican brands available on the market today I paid about $231 for these and I think it's an excellent choice for the price you can get these directly from their site and one thing to note is that the team will primarily be communicating through Spanish but this shouldn't be a problem if you use Google Translate so the next ones we're going to cover are the Salvadors. Uh, the company is based in Spain. I really do like the design of these gloves. Uh, super sleek. I mean, they just look like premium gloves. And I can tell you, they definitely feel like premium gloves. Very soft, very malleable, easy to open and close the palm. Probably the softest gloves amongst all the ones that I've uh, reviewed today. It's got a relatively long cuff. Roomy, but still snug, you know, when I make a fist. So I think, you know medium or average size hands to big hands shouldn't have a problem with these definitely feel a good pop when i use these like i mentioned these are premium gloves good for the price i bought these on sale for about 240 dollars i think normally they go for about 260 and up and you can buy these directly from their website so the next gloves we're going to cover are the bayonettas uh, this is actually the in-house brand for the boxing collector uh, for a very long time the boxing collector was working with a lot of the workshops and manufacturers in mexico so he's very knowledgeable when it comes to you know Mexican brands and some of the different lines and also a lot of the uh, manufacturing process so I guess he decided to start his own brand about a year or some change ago these gloves themselves very soft and malleable um, similar to new sportings you know it's got a longer profile these were roomier so I think these are probably gonna be better for folks with pretty big hands it does have a pretty round edge on the glove you know kind of like on the opposite side of the spectrum compared to like the classics and Lopez's these are super round so that's something to keep Keep in mind you know when you're looking for gloves that you know are going to be very protective when you throw the punches right from my understanding the price has gone up in the last several months i got these used the new ones i think run about 389 dollars or so so you know i'm a little bit torn i don't know if i would pay full price for these but also at the same time i wouldn't be very quick to say no i wouldn't i just think i need a little bit more time to you know see the brand grow and how they handle qc issues and if there are qc issues with their products before really making that decision so the next brand I'm gonna cover is the No Boxing No Life gloves. Uh, these are popular because they're heavily associated with Canelo. The gloves are, you know, again, very soft, malleable, easy to open and close the fist. These are definitely puncher's gloves. These have a very small form factor, kind of like the Campeones, which I do appreciate. The gloves themselves, I like the design. I really like the color combination. I bought these used and when I bought them, the logo is already removed. The gloves themselves, I think they're fine gloves, but they are absolutely priced up. I think for $449, there's definitely better options at that price point where they're looking for Mexican style gloves or even other handmade gloves there's definitely other options at this price point so the last gloves we're gonna cover are gonna be the Grant Pro Hook and Loops so the Grant brand's been around since 1995 and for a long time it was probably one of the most favorite brands amongst pro boxers talking about the gloves themselves um, they definitely are a puncher's glove through and through they've got a rough liner inside um, definitely not soft like the winnings um, but you feel the punches there's definitely just a specific kind of pop whenever you use these gloves right just like some of the other ones we've covered today I really enjoy using these for bag work and pad work 
work. Would I choose these gloves over no boxing, no life? Yes, absolutely, I would. But would I choose it over all the other gloves we've covered today? Probably not. You know, I'd probably look into Torres Medina first. Um, if that's not what you're looking for, I think something very similar to Grants, but a fraction of the price would be new sporting. So that's probably what I would do before investing into some Grants. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, learned something new. Maybe we shared a couple of brands that you might want to look into. We will be coming out with more brand reviews very soon. If there's any other brands you want us to cover, leave us a comment below. But until then, keep training, stay safe, and be healthy. We'll see you guys in the next one.